It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey folks, today I'm taking a look at Broom Service. Broom Service is a recent uh, award-winning game. It is a re-implementation, kind of reworking of an older game called Witch's Brew. And in this one, that game is just a card game. This one adds a board, retweaks several things, adds lots of variants that you can actually throw in or remove from the game depending on how difficult you want the game to be. But ultimately, it's a fairly straightforward game about delivering potions and being clever with some card play. I'm going to show you an, an overview of how the game works, and then I'll tell you what I think of this one. Here we go. The first thing you'll do in the game is decide which side of the board you want to play with. There is this side here, and then the back, which is a little bit uh, more advanced than this side and looks like that. It has these uh, these letters here that are missing on the other side, the A, the B, the C, the D, and there's just a little bit more going on. I'm gonna be showing you this side just so that I can explain what everything is, but one big part of the game is that you can sort of scale up and scale down the complexity of the game as you see fit. So here's what the game looks like set up for four players. As you can see, the four colors are here as well as on the scoring stack, we start at 10 victory points. The objective of the game is to get the most victory points, and you are going to be doing that largely from delivering goods to castles. Each player starts with one of each kind of good, which are these three colors here. And you're going to be delivering these on the board, getting victory points uh, during the game from that, and then also at the end of the game, which is seven rounds, by the way, the whole game, uh, you are going to be getting some victory points from having these lightning bolt symbols, which are seen here on these clouds, I'll get to those, from having some leftover resources, and from having some amulets, if you choose to play with that. There's, I'm going to be showing you basically here everything, but there's a lot of things, like I said, that you could remove make the game simpler. Each player is given in the game a set of 10 cards, and these cards are pretty much the heart of the game. These cards, every round, uh, each player is going to pick four of these cards, and they are going to dictate pretty much everything you do in the game. They allow you to gather resources, they allow you to move around the board, they allow you to deliver... Uh, dispel the clouds, etc. Lots of different effects. So, for example, this card here says, I am the brave root gatherer, and if I choose to do this, then I'm going to get one of the uh, orange potion there and two magic wands. If I choose to do the cowardly power, I'm just going to get uh, the one potion and the one wand. Why would anybody pick the weak one? Versus the strong one. Well, very simple. When I pick, when if I pick the the weak one here, I do it right away. I'm going to play this, and I'm immediately going to get the uh, potion, and I immediately get the magic wand. However, if I if I pick the the brave power, the strong power, then I have to wait until everybody, every other player has had a chance to play this same card. And if anybody after me plays the same card and does the strong power, I lose the opportunity to do it at all. So, basically, I either take a risk on this and hope no one else after me has the card, or I do this weaker power right away, guaranteed. You know, through the play, each player is going to move their witches. You start with two pawns on the board here, so let's say I get to trigger, um, let's say I'm, I'm yellow here, and I get to trigger the uh, witch Call the Mountain Witch, okay? So let's say I get the full power because no one else picked it. That means at the end of the round, no, I was the first one or, or the last one to say that I was taking the Brave Power. No one after me trumped it, basically. And so I'm going to pick one of my two. I'm going to move in here. And then I am going to deliver to that castle there the matching potion. It matches the color of the roof of the castle there, the tower. 
the uh, depending on the castle, there's an arrow here. I'm not sure if you can see that. It depends if I can deliver to this once and then the place shuts down or if they keep taking that potion over and over. This place takes it once. And so I'm going to, using that witch's power, deliver here. I get four victory points. And so I'm going to move my pawn here four spaces like so. That's the basic idea. Again, at the beginning of every round, we would have revealed one of these. This one says Brave Heart. Let me flip it over here so I can read it. The first player to play each roll card must be brave. Uh, the first player of the round gets one magic wand, meaning everybody gets a magic wand if they start the round, but you have to say brave. You cannot go straight for the weak. The person that leads the next hand, by the way, is whoever won the brave round. So, other ways to get victory points, you can deliver, like I said. You are going to be able to dispel clouds, which is with the weather fairy here. She can charm away the clouds. It says, I am the brave weather fairy, and charm away an adjacent cloud with the necessary magic wands at plus three victory points, or at nothing. And so let's say I am here, and let's say I started with two magic wands, and then I get to trigger this one with the weak power, let's say. Well, I get to give up two of these. This here, this cloud takes two, and it gives me one lightning bolt, so I'll be grabbing that and keeping it, and at the end of the game, getting some victory points for how many lightning bolts I've been able to gather, okay? The, uh... The amulets here matter when you get to a mountain area that has these amulets. You are going to be able to grab one. And there are all these tokens all over the board in the mountains and sometimes here in the forests, which give you some power as well if you are the first one in there, okay? There are these areas here which allow you to jump around. This one says from A to D or D to A. The, the markings are here. These are not on the other side of the board, by the way. And you can jump around. You have to be aware that in D and in B here, you might be stranded, cut off. And so that, that pawn of yours might be stuck on that island. If you jump into B, let's say, you will get to deliver in there. And there's some really valuable castles in there. But you might be stuck in there for a while or possibly for the rest of the game. And so that's basically it. That's pretty much how the game works. Again, what you can remove from the game to make the game simpler than this is you can get rid of some special clouds which are in play, like uh, this special cloud here lets you make a special combination to get some victory points. You can remove all the, all the special clouds. This cloud lets you deliver where that cloud is at plus two. You can remove the special tokens which appear in the different land types. You can remove these amulets. They're an extra thing. And uh, that's pretty much it. Also, the other side of the board has a, a simplified layout. The game, after seven rounds, you, ra you finish uh, delivering. You finish uh, playing everything. You count up your lightning. You count up leftover resources. If you have a... Uh, one of every kind, and this counts wands, you get another four victory points per set. If you have three of the four, you get another two victory points. You can keep, you know, scoring that. If you played with these, you get that score, and that's it. High score after all of that is the winner of the game. I think Broom Service is a really clever and very entertaining family game, and it's, of course, it's had the benefit of being developed a couple of times now. It was Witch's Brew which is largely the card version of this, and then reworked into this where they had a chance to, to take another look at everything, polish everything up, add some interest, add some variety. And so I think it's a, a really charming, gorgeous looking game that works very well for a family type of, of setting. A family get together, playing with friends, but it is not a heavy game, of course, and it has had some backlash because... Uh, of it winning the uh, Kinderspiel Award, which is sort of an advanced gamers award. And uh, some people see the game as too light for having won that award. That's neither here nor there, but 
be aware that there has been a little bit of backlash to it because of that. I don't know about it winning that award if it should have or if it's the right weight for that category, but I think the game is a solid game. It's not without its blemishes, but it's a very well put together game and, and clearly um, I think it's, it delivers a nice amount of fun. Now here are my issues with the game. I um, I don't like that the one one big issue, the main issue I have with it is that the, the castle representations on the board itself can be hard to distinguish sometimes which area of the board they're sitting in. So the, the base of the castle is what you're supposed to be looking at. I get that. But sometimes it's still hard to tell if it's in this upper mountain area or is it in this lower uh, forest area. Because the base isn't quite clear. And so I'm, that's a little bit of an, of an issue that I wish was not a problem. It's something that could have been resolved very easily, but... They, they left the door open there for some ambiguity with that with the look of that board, the look of the design, you know. So that's a problem a little bit. I hate having to not be sure or having people ask, okay, oh, I thought I could deliver to this castle and saying, no, that's actually in this region over here. Um, not a game breaker, but certainly something I wish they could have, they, they should have avoided, right? Something they could have avoided. And so that's my main issue with it. I, it also has a lot of variants that are kind of hard to puzzle out. I mean, that's good, you know, uh, variability and, and, and different ways to play the game. But there are a lot of them. And it's almost like they gave you... It's almost like they couldn't make up their minds about what the game should be. So they they threw everything in and, and said, well, you can play with any of these ways what pick pick one you know figure out what you want to throw in there i like the extra clouds that's all cool but then you start throwing in those amulets okay and then the tiles that sit on the forests and the tiles that sit on the mountains and it's okay uh, i probably won't play with everything like that i did show you that just so you could see everything that's in there but i actually like the other side with the clouds maybe throw in some of the special clouds and that's good enough. It's got a nice uh, amount of variety, you know, variety and tension with just that. So, um, that's basically it. I think it's a solid family game. I'm not sure if it's getting a lot of love or not, but I think it should because, um, while it's not, uh, you know, a very revolutionary game, the card system from the original game was always very intriguing, and here it's been put to good use. It's, uh, they've added a board and added it in an interesting and successful way. The game is, um, has a pretty good pace to it. It's a little long, maybe like 15 minutes too long for how repetitive it is, you know, like maybe six rounds would be okay. But I understand that sometimes you need that much time to get out there to the farther areas of the board. So that's fine. You know, it's not something I would necessarily say change because it, it matters. But um, otherwise, a really neat family game. Uh, Broom Service here is a, is a winner, so you should check it out if this is the kind of thing you're looking for. Broom Service. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.